for those of you who I, I don't, I doubt there's anybody just chiming in for the first time, but I'm Dr. Judy Morgan. I'm the host of the Natural Pet Care Summit. And my guest this afternoon is Miss Kimberly Gutierrez from Washington State. And uh, she has a real job by day. <laughs> which I didn't know um, <laughs> until I met her in person. Uh, and she writes a blog called Keep the Tail Wagging. She has written uh, at least one book. Are, are, is there a second? Two now. Two now. Um, yeah, this one right here is being rewritten this year. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I got to rewrite that one. <laughs> so uh, so uh, we invited her to, first of all, she's just a fun, amazing person. If you haven't spent time with her, I would recommend it when you can get out of your households, um, which I think we're starting to be able to do. Um, if you ever get the chance to hear her speak, uh, highly recommended. She's kind of uh, just fun and amazing. Um, and she, her blog is chock full of so much information. It uh, just will blow you out of the water. And she's really into raw feeding and she has a pack of dogs, which we may hear from at some point and which may make mine chime in. And that, you know, it just is what it is. Uh, can't wait, you have a date for martinis next March. Okay. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All right, Kimberly, can I pet your dog? <laughs> I know, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> See that? Well, that's clearly someone who follows you. So I'm going to do um, what I have done for the other two today. Kimberly did prepare a few slides for us. So I'm going to make her the host so that she can share the screen because I haven't figured out how else to do that. Uh, make Kimberly the host. Yes. And um, you uh, uh, are you the only one with the margarita? Well, I haven't gotten there yet, but by the seven o'clock one, maybe, although it probably would have been more fun to have that drink with Kimberly. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, so she's got a few slides prepared and Kimberly, it's up to you whether, uh, you want to try to follow the chat and answer questions as you go, answer them at the end. It's kind of, you know, sometimes they go by fast and you don't notice them. It's totally your call. Okay, sure. And I will, I'm just making sure my slides don't get away from me. Okay. And then gosh darn it. I'm so glad I'm not the only tech know, channel. Actually, like, you're much more tech savvy than I am. No, and I'm like having so many issues right now. Uh, okay, so I just gave up on there. Okay, let me get back here. Hi guys. So I think it's funny because I don't know how long I've known Judy, but oh my God, there's a deer outside. So that's probably gonna happen. Girl. Because <laughs> it's like, there's a deer out down at our pond, you know, drinking water and we have a deer family. So it's probably three more on the property. That's okay. So anyway, um, I've known Judy for probably close to 10 years because my blog is almost 10 years old. Judy used to help me. I met her through Harrow. Where, oh yeah, uh, help a like reporter help, out. Help a reporter out where you can go in and you just put in queries and you ask for professionals to respond and give you advice. And eventually Judy and I just took it off of Harrow because she was constantly <laughs> responding and I just started messaging her directly. And so, <laughs> yeah, so she's all over. And I, I yeah, forgot was, that's how we met. Years, I don't even, I just, it was years before we actually met. We met years, when I think AFCO was in AFCO Seattle. AFCO Bellevue, yeah. And when AFCO was in Bellevue, because I met Susan then too. Yeah. I was just total fangirling. <laughs> like sitting next to Susan Thixton and doing a selfie, like, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like we get excited about, you know, food people and dog stuff, and the rest of the world gets excited about, you know, celebrities. I could sit next to a celebrity on an airplane and would have no clue because I don't watch TV. <laughs> I don't I, go to I the movies. <laughs> I would have a clue, but I just wouldn't know what to say unless they were a dog person. And then it would be like, hey, that's great. Let's talk about dogs. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and start my slides if I can. Um, I don't screw this one up. So there Yay! that is my screen. And there, and there, there's my slide. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So something's supposed to happen there, that, that's supposed to happen. So as um, Judy says, my name is Kimberly. I write the blog, Keep the Tail Wagging. I started my blog um, several years ago, um, 10 years ago, December 24th, 2021 will be my 10 year anniversary. And I originally started Keep the Tail Wagging to give advice about litter mate syndrome. 
So um, I was a brand new pet parent. I think maybe our dogs, uh, you know, our dogs were about a year old. We had litter mates. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. We didn't have litter mate syndrome. So all of a sudden in my mind, that made me an expert on dog behavior, litter mates and litter mate syndrome. And so I was gonna start a blog to educate the world about how to have dogs that get along with each other. It <laughs> didn't take me long to realize that I had no idea what I was talking about. And um, I didn't even, I didn't know what I was doing with the blogging, with anything. And this wasn't my first blog either, but I was still just kind of figuring things out uh, I think Rodrigo, if you guys follow me, you guys know the story of Rodrigo. He and Sydney, Sydney passed away last year of hemangiosarcoma. R Rodrigo is still with us. He's right over there. And, um, but Rodrigo for the first three years of his life, he had, um, diarrhea, um, itchy paws, itchy skin, skin rashes, um, you name it, chronic ear infections, just so on and so forth. And watching Peter Tobias earlier for me this morning, was just like, I was just watching that like, yes, exactly. <laughs> but back then, you know, I didn't know any better. So I just kept taking my dog to the vet, like, hey, it's the ear infection's back, or hey, the rash is back, or hey, this is what's happening now. Um, and the vet just told me, hey, this is just what dogs are. And he said, and since you have a rescue, you have no idea what type of health issues he's gonna have. This is just the way it is. And he would prescribe me antibiotics. And so if anyone is in their home groaning at the mention of antibiotics to treat what could be like food intolerances or environmental allergies, then you probably remember that when you were brand new, you had no idea. It's like, these are things that we learned as part of this community that, you know, antibiotics are going to uh, attack the gut health and basically make all the symptoms that my dog was experiencing worse and worse and worse. And that's why he kept getting the ear infections back because I was not underlying or I was not dealing with the underlying issues right. with him, which was his gut health. So I was just, as you guys were talking about earlier, just putting a bandaid on everything and few months he would be fine or I would change his food, his few months he would be fine and then everything would start going back. Well, during this time I was blogging and I started hearing about raw feeding. And that's when I decided to switch my dogs to raw feeding. And if you guys have experienced the raw feeding community for the first time, <laughs> if you guys remember that experience, um, it was hard to understand, like, what is this raw feeding? What am I supposed to do? At the time, I didn't even know that there was a such thing as DIY, and which blows my mind. I understood that people cooked for their dogs, but, you know, making just raw at home, I don't know why I didn't think that people did that, but I... <laughs> Figured you have to go to the store and buy some frozen food, put it in a bowl and feed it to your dogs. And I had three dogs at the time. The cost was outrageous because I was also planning on ordering food and having it shipped to me. And, um, but I eventually found a brand that I went with, got my dog switched over to um, raw. And within a first couple weeks um, on a partial raw diet, my dog, Rodrigo, like he had a skin rash before he started that was just, it was healing but it had just looked horrible on his back. A few days after being on a raw diet, going through his hair, you couldn't even find where the rash had been. There was like, there were no scabs, there was nothing. And everything just started getting better and better and better. And at the time, I also took the time to start learning. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. It's just sort of like um, what you're, tr the best way to learn about how to feed your dogs a healthier diet, whether it be raw, whether it be cooked, whether it be a hybrid diet, whatever the case may be, it can be intimidating to try and jump into these groups, you know, <laughs> trying to figure out this stuff for the first, second, third, I mean, for the first time for you, but you know, for everyone else, second, third or fourth time, you post a question in a group and people are like, why didn't you search this? We always talk about the best grinders. And <laughs> sorry if that voice sounded familiar and it was yours, it's not personal, <laughs> but um, it's just really aggravating because it's like when you're brand new, you don't know what to search. You just, you don't know what you're doing. You're just figuring it out. And so it can be intimidating, it can be scary. And I get a lot of messages from people who are, they want to feed their dogs a healthier diet, but they are struggling on how to get there. And it's funny because I always tell people that if you just keep educating yourself, one day you'll realize that you're feeding your dogs and you're not even giving it any thought. 
at least that's what happened to me. I'm going to just say, I'm assuming that it happens to everyone eventually. That's what happened to me. And I love it. So <laughs> I stopped writing about litter mates. Every now and then I throw a post out there, but not really. Um, and I write about raw feeding. That's not all I write about, but that's a big chunk of keep the tail wagging. So, um, oh, I forgot to hit the thing twice. So, <laughs> so learning about raw feeding. I think it's important that everyone keep an open mind when you're whether you are brand new to raw or you've been feeding raw for 10 years or 30 years, always keep an open mind. And the reason why is because you are constantly going to be getting new information. You will have different dogs. Your dogs will grow older and things will change. And you need to be able to adapt and adjust. And if you keep an open mind, that adjustment will be just a lot less stressful for you. So right now we have four dogs and over the past year, I've had to make a lot of changes with my animals. When Sydney was diagnosed with hemangiosarcoma, I had to take a lot of foods out of her diet that I was used to feeding because hemangiosarcoma is a bleeding cancer. And so I couldn't feed her foods that would prevent her blood from clotting. Um, when Rodrigo, he's now 11 years old, he's geriatric. Um, and I put that in air quotes because he still runs around and plays. He doesn't look like a, a geriatric dog to me, but still he's older. And so I'm adjusting his diet accordingly to make sure he's getting the support that he needs. And then we also have, um, he's not a puppy anymore, but I still call him a puppy. Apollo is two years old. I skipped over Scout and Zoe. They're seven. Apollo is two years old, but when he came to us, he was seven months old. So I had an a di adapted a diet again because I have a growing animal in my house and I needed to make sure that he was getting supported that way as well. So I can make these changes at the drop of a hat. I mean, I'm comfortable with it because I keep an open mind and I understand that every single dog is unique. Um, and I can't just assume that whenever a dog comes into our home that I can treat them the exact same as all the other dogs. It may start out that way, but eventually I have to adapt and adjust their diet to meet that individual dog's needs. And Trust me, eight years ago when I started feeding raw, yeah, eight years ago, um, I'm an accountant by day. So I'm, <laughs> glad I, so I'm glad I didn't use my fingers. <laughs> but um, eight years ago, if you would have told me that, you know, oh yeah, you can adapt, you can adjust. And if, I'm say, if someone was saying all this stuff to me and someone probably was, my ears would start bleeding, my eyes would cross, and then I would just go and curl up in a ball in bed and just cry because I was gonna have to feed kibble for the rest of my life. No shade against kibble, but it's like, I was trying to get Rodrigo off of kibble because that was part of his problem. So that's that. Um, if, you, if you find someone stressful, so there's, I, I always say that there's a gazillion raw feeding groups. I know there's not a gazillion raw feeding groups. Seems but like it. it feels like there are. <laughs> and it's hard when you're new to raw feeding and you're getting excited and you're learning, you want to join all of these groups. Well, guess what? You're going to see all the same people in all the groups. So there's no point in joining all the groups or being a member of all of these groups. Instead, check them out. Try them on for size. See what works for you, what doesn't work for you. I see this question a lot from people where people are so frustrated with a group and they tell me, man, I was going to leave that group today. And, <laughs> and I'm just sort of like, then leave it. If every single time you interact in the group or you go to this group and you're just aggravated either by the tone of the discussion, the discussions themselves, the people, whatever the case may be, that is going to take away from your ability to, to learn and advance, you know, what you need to do is, and plus it's like, life is too short. <laughs> don't waste time in a group that you don't enjoy. There are so many of them out there that I promise you, you will find a group that is good for you. And, you know, there are groups that are great for people who want to know the math and the science behind raw feeding. They want to calculate the macro and micronutrients. There are groups that specifically go to that. There are groups that are specifically prey model raw. There are groups that are um, a little bit of everything. And so you can just find the group that will work for you you'll just be happier. And the same thing for, goes for content creators. If you're following someone and every time they post something, you're like, this guy is an idiot <laughs> or, or a lady. Ladies can be idiots as well. Don't follow that person. It's okay. Just, it's okay. If someone isn't your cup of tea, it's okay not to follow them. You don't have to follow someone because everyone else is following them. It's all right. I mean, there are quite a few people 
that um, post things. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and it's just like, and the only reason why is because it doesn't work in my house. Right. I mean, it's, and it's okay. Um, well, we but, even had that this morning. So yeah. Billy spent an hour talking about the wonders of dairy and Peter Tobias said, boy, I think we should never feed our dogs dairy. And, you know, of course the chat lit up and everybody's like, well, what do we do? I'm so confused. <laughs> and, you know, there are different opinions. And I, I think a lot of it in Billy's uh, case is he's really talking about the fermentation and the raw milk, not talking about the pasteurized milk that we're buying from the store and pasteurized cheese and that sort of thing. So I think there is a difference, uh, but it really is what works for you. Yeah. Um, and we found that with our dogs and I'm pretty sure Michelle Allen from Monkey's House is on, but they've got usually 25 dogs that they're feeding and there aren't two meals that are the same. And uh, it, it can seem daunting when you look at it and say, wow, okay. But when you, when, like Kimberly said, once you get into it and you realize this specific dog doesn't do well on this specific ingredient. So it's out of that bowl, but it might be okay in this bowl. Um, and you figure that out with time. Yeah. I mean, that's why I like to do, um, doing my meals on camera to show people that it's really not a big deal. I mean, yes, we see those beautiful bowls on social media. I love them too, but I don't feed my dogs that way. My dog's bowls are messy and I'm okay with that. My dogs don't care. And, um, but it's super easy to just, and it's funny because Billy, the one thing that I disagree with him on, besides the fact that Lua loved that bread and Lua crawled into my lap and she was looking at that bread and she told me it was okay. So she put me under the bus a little there. Um, but um, another thing was meal prep. You know, he was talking about, he likes to make his meals as he goes. Of course he has one dog. Um, yeah. But for all those of us who have multiple dogs, it's just so much easier to do meal prep. And it's like, just thinking about, gosh, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to just make each meal you know, at each, you know, one meal in the morning, one meal, not doing it on the weekend and then just spooning it out. I mean, it's we have a hard enough time around here getting all the right medications and supplements in the right bowls. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I know I would just get to completely overwhelmed. But it, again, it's Billy's not wrong and I'm not wrong. We're right. just different. We have different situations, different setups, and this is what works for us. And the beauty of it, the beauty of all these different opinions, and I know it can be frustrating when people are contradicting each other. But the beauty of it is the message that you should be taking from this is that there isn't just one way to feed our dogs. Exactly. There isn't one path to get to a nutritious diet. You can, you just basically follow these people and start like, oh, that makes sense to me. Or yeah, I can do that. That makes perfect sense to me. And eventually you'll collect enough information that you have now created a diet of your own. Um, one thing that I believe is that, you know, we have BARF model and PREY model and NRC and all these different models of feeding our dogs. But ultimately, I don't think anyone is following the original model. I think people start there, they try them, a few of them around, but eventually they monkey around with a model until they get it to be what their dog needs. Exactly. And, that, and that's exactly what we should also be doing. So, um, Raw, the raw feeding community, as I said, is huge. There are so many people to follow. There's so many, there's books. There's so many books now on, and so many blogs. I mean, when I started, I knew of a couple of blogs and um, cause that's what I was trying to get information from. But now, I mean, gosh, it's, it's astounding. I mean, I'm hearing from people who are starting raw food companies all the time, all around the world. And it's, it's a huge thing. It's this thing that uh, you know, five, six years ago, people were like, yeah, that raw feeding fad. And now we're seeing raw feeding commercials on television. I've only seen it twice. I have still, not seen it yet, but I don't watch TV. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that, that's pretty exciting. Just that this, you know, and I remember a few years ago on Criminal Minds, a character was feeding his dog a raw food diet. And I was just like, I don't even watch that show. I just happened to turn on TV and it was background noise. I turned towards the TV and saw him making a meal. I thought he was making himself a meal. And then he puts it down on the ground for his dog. And I just started screaming that, oh my gosh. So, but the big question is, was the premise of the story that he had been poisoned by the raw food that he was making <laughs> You probably didn't watch it long enough to find I did, it. I didn't. All I did was just dance around and scream, and then I moved around with my day. <laughs> so, um, 
this is where I come up with, and I can't for the life of me remember who gave me this advice, but I was told to feed the dog in front of you. Mm -hmm. And when someone told me that, all of the noise went away because then I can just take information that I saw coming through my various social media feeds and just push it aside because that doesn't, you know, that won't work for my dogs or that doesn't, isn't related to my dogs. And it just made it less stressful. Cause I know that, you know, it sometimes feels like we're in school again. We have so much information coming our way and there's all these testings that you can do and courses that you can take. And it's just a little bit overwhelming. Um, and it's funny to think that Gosh, when I was a kid and I had a dog, my dog Jackson Joel Stripe Morris Barnes was his name. I was a kid, so that's why he had such a long name. Um, and I still remember looking at the counter like this at the vet's office when we took him to the vet for the first time and watching the vet write out every single one of his names. <laughs> I wanted to. But um, we fed him kibbles and bits and we switched his food all the time because it was based on what was uh, on sale. And then we fed him scraps as well. And he didn't live a long life, to be honest. Um, for back then, he, he died at seven and I, it was our fault. Um, but, um, you know, but that's, we didn't think about if someone would have told my mom back in the 80s that she needed to take a course or have meals formulated, or I mean, I don't, I don't even think she would have entertained that conversation. She would have probably just walked away from the crazy person and just like, she didn't do that for me. She wasn't definitely going to do it for our dog. So, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy just the world that has changed over the years. So well, um, social media is a huge part of that, I think. Yes, big time. <laughs> so many of us. Um, but, you know, another thing that I like to think about is who's an expert when it comes to your individual dogs? Who's the expert in my house? It's me and then our veterinarian and down the list is Johan. But the top two is me and our veterinarian. We're the experts on our dogs, not a random stranger on social media who decided after you shared a picture of your dogs that your dog is now overweight and you need to do this. And, or, you know, because you decided to, you're sharing duck necks for your dog and then 10 people tell you, oh my God, the thyroid, is it still on the neck? And, you know, all of those type of things. Focus on your dog and the fact that you know what's right for your dog. Don't allow strangers to make you second guess yourself. I mean, you should always be open to new information and learning. But when someone I've had people argue with me about Rodrigo, <laughs> I mean, and I was stupidly entertained those arguments. And it's like <laughs> crazy. These people have never met me, let alone my dog. So it's just like, why are we arguing about him? So just keep that in mind. You are the expert in your dog. Um, follow the people who resonate with you. I said this earlier, but if someone shares a message in a way that you really like, for instance, you know, um, there are people who do tons of research and they link to lots of studies and they're sharing all this information with it. For some people, that's what they want. There are some people out there that just tell you what to do. And for some people, that's exactly what they want. I don't agree with it, but if that's what you want. Okay. And then there are people who are just kind of like me where I'm a go with the flow. You do what you got to do. I'm just going to share what I'm doing. I'm curious about what you're doing at your house, but no judgment. Let's just keep our dogs healthy and follow the people that resonate with you. That is where you're going to succeed. Do not join every raw feeding Facebook group. I did that and I got kicked out of most of them <laughs> because I broke the rules constantly. Um, it's just, it's pointless. I, one thing I'll see is like, if you're a member of several groups, I'm sure you guys have probably seen this too, where someone will go to five groups and post the exact same question. And it's like, you're gonna get 300 answers. Are you really gonna be able to take all that information in? It's just overwhelming. So pick one or two groups. I prefer to just have one group that I'm a member of and I, I barely even um, participate in the group. But sometimes I just, a, a question will come up I find it interesting and I'll just follow the discussion and learn something new. And as I already said, there are many, many paths to get your dog to a nutritious diet. There is no you know, right way to feed your dogs, you know, or I should say the right way is how your dog needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. No one out there can come and tell you that, no, you need to do A, B, C, and D for your dog to have a healthy diet. Unless the A, B, C, and D is, are things like yeah, feed your dog, walk your dog, you know, pick up after your dog's poop, take your dog to the veterinarian. There's A, B, C, and D. Do those things, you'll have a, hopefully a healthy dog. But 
as far as, you know, when people have very strict rules on how to feed a dog, it always cracks me up when people say things like, you may as well just feed kibble because if you're not gonna feed raw the way I think you should feed raw, by the way, I don't know your dog or your dog's health situation or anything, but if you don't do what I think you should do, then you may as well just go and feed kibble. You know, the same thing goes for cooked food. I'm sure you hear this all the time um, of, well, if you cook the food, you kill all the nutrients. And, you know, and it's just sort of like, you know, I, I actually believe this for you. I years. specifically had to address that in our uh, homemade food 101 course that we just released recently. I specifically addressed how cooking and 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 which way you're cooking, whether you're steaming something or boiling something or baking something, I specifically went into this is how it changes the vitamins in the particular food and depending on how you're how you're preparing it. Because I do get that a lot. Well, especially from raw feeding groups, well, you just ruined the food because you got heat anywhere near it. And it's so untrue, so untrue. And it, uh, it's not the same for meats versus vegetables. So um, don't don't believe that. Don't fall for it when they say you've ruined it. There's no nutrients left. If that's the case, then three quarters of the world's population is dead because we've been cooking our food for a really long time. <laughs> oh, Kimberly, we, you're muted. Unmute. Ah, Kimberly, you're muted. Uh, okay, there we go. There you are. I was like, huh, I can't hear. I can see. I muted talking. myself because I thought Rodrigo was going to start barking, and then it. Went, ah. I couldn't get so, what are my dogs eating? I saw um, Billy's presentation earlier, so I came back and added something. Oh, cool! Thank you. Eating. And but the thing about it is that I don't have recipes. Um, you know, I do share, like if, you know, I would call it, I, I'll call my recipes recipes with air quotes because I do everything in bulk and I don't do the weighing and measuring and, or anything like that. I'm more of a, that looks like enough food for that. And that only after my own heart, <laughs> yeah, a few scoops of this and da, 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 and there's my food. And, um, so I do a combination of DIY raw feeding. I do commercial raw I do home cooked and I also fast my dogs once or twice a week. So the reason why all of that is variety. You know, I choose commercial raw for proteins that I can't source myself for DIY. So there are like rabbit, for instance, um, usually a rabbit is just easier for me to get from a local brand down in Olympia, Washington, rather than paying for it myself and then mixing it up because it's crazy expensive here. Um, the proteins that I mostly feed to my dogs are quail, duck, beef, turkey, venison, pork, rabbit, emu, and lamb. So lots of variety here in the Pacific Northwest. If you are in the Pacific Northwest and you do not belong to our raw food co-op, you are missing out. It is a great co-op. You can go to my blog, keepthetailwagging.com backslash co-op, um, and you can see a, um, a link to Wazur, which is our local co-op. Um, the organ meat that I feed to my dogs is primarily beef and pork. And that's because that's something that I can get from local farms. Um, it's super easy. I live in a rural part of Western Washington and I have a friend who goes around to farms to dispatch of animals for people. A lot of people here are homesteading and he just collects all the organs and puts them in his freezer until I have room in my freezer and I go and pick them up and take them. So, and they're free. So yay, there's a wow. hint. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I like to use a base mix. And for those of you guys who follow me, you guys know that it's just so, so much easier to use a base mix than trying to figure out all the various things to balance a diet. I have the animal diet formulator software. It is awesome. If you can afford it, <clears throat> sorry about that. If you can afford it, I highly suggest um, investing in it or, you know, maybe going in with a friend, Diane and Janet, I think you guys were maybe talking about that once. Um, I have found it useful because it has educated me about the different foods um, that I can add to my dog's diet, where certain nutrients, what foods provide which nutrients, things like that. I love it. However, I have not been able to get a recipe below like 17 or 18 ingredients. <laughs> And I will tell you, I don't like the software. We bought it 
I, yeah. I don't like it. I started using it at the beginning um, and mostly <laughs> I, I wanted to put some of my recipes in it to see how they came together. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm dang close on these recipes. And that just took me a lot of time to put that in there. Yes. Um, and, and part of it is I'm not, I'm not a spreadsheet person. So for me to have to spend that much time to figure out how to make a meal for my dog totally was not worth it for me, but there are people who are so afraid of making a mistake. And again, that's why we made the course because we were like, yeah don't be afraid to make a mistake. And using a base mix, like you said, is a good way to say, you know what, I don't even have to worry about it. Or adding a, a whole food vitamin supplement or mineral supplement, then it's it's like, okay, well, I might be close, but I might be missing a little something, but I know I'm gonna pick it up in, yeah. in this. Um, I don't know if you wanna tell us what which base mix you use, somebody did. Oh, yes. It's Dr. Harvey's Paradigm. So Dr. Harvey's has Paradigm and Raw Vibrance. I prefer Paradigm because it's low glycemic. And um, I used to alternate between the two, but when Sydney developed cancer, I just stuck with the Paradigm. And now that Scout has lymphoma, it's like, yay, 2020. <laughs> um, you know, you know and, but of course, you know, you guys know who follow me, Scout is killing it. I mean, it's just, warms my heart. Um, he's doing so well, but I keep him on a low glycemic diet. So, uh, so that's why I like that one. I love paradigm. It just, I do 80, 10, 10, and then I mix in paradigm and then any other things that I feel like adding that week. And that's how I come up with a balanced diet. And I nutrient test my dogs every other year. The reason why it's every other year is because it costs $200 per dog. I have four dogs had five dogs. So yeah, thousand dollars. Um, so it's a lot of money to nutrient test them. So I do it every other year just to make sure everything is good. If any of their tests come back with any type of, mm, then I'll, I, I'll test them sooner, but, um, so far so good. Just doing what I'm doing is working for my pack. So I'm happy about that. And then, you know, I have the list of, you know, these aren't daily things that my dogs get, but like everyone else, you know, raw eggs, sardines, um, mackerel, fermented fish stock, um, goat's milk, kefir, bone broth, so on and so forth. I add to my dog's meals, you know, just for different things. I won't go into details now. You guys can wait a minute. What am I doing? It's not letting me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so if now, so that was the raw feeding part. Because this session is keep the tail wagging, I wanted to talk about the blogging part too, but this will be a little. Awesome. So I get emails from people all the time who want to share their experience. What used to crack me up is that I used to get emails from people that were like, hey, Kimberly, I want to start a blog about raw feeding too. Is it okay? And it's like, guys, I do not own the space <laughs> of blogging about raw feeding. I'm not the first and I'm not going to be the last. And keep in mind that I don't believe in competition. I know competition's out there. I know that it exists, but to me, it's just, it doesn't make any sense because there are literally millions and millions of people out there who want to raise healthier pets. And I am not going to be, um, I'm not going to resonate with everybody. Right. So we need more voices that are sharing their experience. There are going to be some people that have a breed that needs to be fed a certain way. There are going to be some people who want to know the details and the specifics as you know Dr. Morgan says because they're afraid of messing things up <clears throat> there are going to be there's so many different ways that we can share information and when there's different tones and also we're learning at different rates so I might not have information that someone brand new would have and vice versa and there's nothing to say that people can't follow several of us I mean, I do. I mean, it's not like I just watch one television program. <laughs> Unlike Dr. Judy Morgan, I love TV. <laughs> we got an 80 inch for Christmas and oh boy, <laughs> is it amazing. <laughs> and I love movies. And again, the people who follow me know that I own, I think your head, your poor head would explode if you came here. Because <laughs> I own over 300 movies. <laughs> I, I have the entire series of like the X-Files and Vampire Diaries and Buffy the Vampires. I mean, yeah, oh. I'm totally going off. So basically, I love TV, but I don't just watch one TV. I don't or one program. I don't just follow one niche of you know interesting topics or content. 
I'm following all kinds of stuff so other people can do. So come on, the more the merrier. If you wanna share your experience, share your experience. And guess what? You don't have to start a blog to do this because social media makes it so much easier. So you can start like a, um, a Facebook page or you can just set up a profile on Instagram, on TikTok, on what else is there? There's Pinterest. There's, uh, there's another one that I'm forgetting, but it doesn't matter. Many of the social media platforms and just start sharing your experience, share meals and just explain what's in the meal and why. And, you know, share things that you're learning about. Just make a schedule, like maybe once or twice a day and post something and just start sharing that information. Don't worry about followers. Don't worry about people who are commenting and liking. If you, if you've been sharing stuff for three months and no one has seen, seen it, trust me, someone's following you. They just may not be liking it, but they are seeing it. They're following you and you are hitting people. It's amazing. The number of people who have reached out to me today and said, you know, I've been following you for seven years. I've never, they, I, I don't know this person. I don't remember them commenting or, sh or anything, but they're there. A lot of people just follow along silently. That's where their comfort is. So keep sharing your experience because while my dogs are doing great, you know, you might have a dog that has a health condition that someone needs information because their dog has that same health condition. I, this is why when Sydney had her mangio, I documented everything that I was learning during that time because I'm still getting messages from people who just got a hemangio um, diagnosis and then they came across my videos and my um, blog posts and it's helping them. Yes. And it's just one of those things where when people see that a person who, I, you know, I wanna say looks like them and I don't mean like looks like them, like, you know, a black person. I mean, just looks like them. That is just a regular person that loves their dog. When someone sees a regular person, they it feels less intimidating than following a lot of the really big names in our community. You know, when you can just go to a normal person, then you feel like a little, like, I can probably just ask them a question. <laughs> and, and it becomes a little easier. Whereas someone might feel like they're bothering a Rodney or a Karen or a Susan. Um, or you won't get an answer yeah, <laughs> because they're, like, they're just overwhelmed. Exactly, but with me, I respond. I love, I love messages. Please don't start spamming me, but I love messages. <laughs> but yeah, start sharing. And, um, but one thing I wanna say, and I've been saying this a lot lately, be careful about what you share. You know, I get information from a lot of people. I am a vault. I, I got dirt on everybody. And <laughs> because someone came to me and, and shared something with me, I do not pass it on because one, it's just bad karma. Two, I might be wrong. And three, I don't want to get sued. So be careful about what you share. You know, stay away from the really hot topics. Make sure that if it's any in any way can be deemed as defamatory, that you have support to back you up. And I would even just say if it is defamatory, even if you have proof and evidence or whatever, just leave it alone. It's not worth it to go down that road. I actually am starting to see bloggers and YouTubers getting sued for libel, slander, and defamation of character. So just be really careful. And, but, you know, have fun with it. I, I love blogging. I mean, even though probably once a year, I swear I'm gonna quit. That's a lot. I've seen those posts a couple times. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> sick of this. I'm so done. <laughs> and so I wanted to um, share like a few mistakes that I've made because I'm human, I screw up. Um, yeah, I overfed my dogs. I was the person who, when I, started feeding raw and I came across a really cool raw food calculator. And I didn't know that the calculation was to be split between however meals you were feeding your dog that day. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, my dogs were eating twice the amount of food. So I, Rodrigo and Sydney were fat, 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 raw fed dogs. I even had people look at my dogs and they're like, they're raw fed. And I'm like, yes, this is how it's supposed to be. And it was after being shamed way too many times in raw feeding groups, including my own, that I finally accepted help. And um, Ronnie Lejeune of Perfectly Rawsome helped me get Sydney down. And Sydney lost over 10 pounds in a year. And Rodrigo, his, he got down on his own. It was just me cutting his food back. He got it down on his own with no problem. But it's little things like that because I wasn't paying attention. I didn't really understand. And I made a mistake. So... Um, 
there are times when I didn't follow my gut or I didn't advocate for my dogs. And by that, I mean, if something doesn't sound right, if your veterinarian is telling you something, you're like, eh, that doesn't sound right to me, beg for more time. I mean, I do it all the time. I mean, thankfully now I have a amazing veterinarian and if she's wa watching, hi Sherry, um, she's awesome. So I, I rarely, you know, uh, disagree with anything. In fact, I don't think I've ever disagreed with anything that she said to me. But in the past, I've had veterinarians who wanted to vaccinate, who wanted to deworm my dogs because I was feeding raw. Um, that face was your dog does not have to be dewormed if you're feeding raw, unless you're feeding some nasty, nasty, parasitic, nasty raw that you should not be feeding to your dog. You're a horrible person. Stop it now. Um, but, you know, I had, I would just be quiet because it's like, well, I don't want to do that vaccination, but they said my dog needs it and, you know, do, a, I don't know, they are the ones that are the veterinarian. Should I really be questioning them? And, you know, it's too many years of me doing that. And now I just go, no, I don't want to do that. I'll go home and research it. If you want to give me some information to take with me and I'll read it and then I'll make another appointment and come back. But that just gets me and my dogs out of the office before a needle gets into them. And because there are some veterinarians that are really fast with that needle. <laughs> it's like oh. before you even finish, no, they're like, oh, we're done. Okay. And Michelle, I've had that happen to me. Michelle, so, Allen and I were texting earlier and uh, the, the doctors wanted to put my mom on these two super duper antibiotics. And um, I said, Michelle, I really don't want these super duper antibiotics. And she said, well, if they're sending her home, just say yes, take the prescriptions, walk out the door and throw them in the trash when you get out. I have done that. I have <laughs> paid for prescription. I mean, they weren't super expensive. Thankfully, many of the prescriptions that just the non-crazy serious ones for dogs are cheap, 20, 30 bucks. Um, and I have gone home and just thrown them away because I just did not feel like having the fight. And, and it's not even really a fight. I'm just, believe it or not, <laughs> I don't like drama and I don't like to argue with people. I know <laughs> you guys to see it. I know. I know what many of you guys are thinking, including you, Judy, but I don't. It makes me uncomfortable. So I will just take it and go home and throw it away. I don't have a problem with that. Um, another mistake, not waiting until all the information is out before I freaked out. Um, I think the thing that got me is several years ago, there was an article by Steve Brown, either it was by Steve Brown or it just referenced his work about balancing fats in a raw food diet. And that was like the year where I was like, I got it. I know how to feed raw. I am a champion. And I was like patting myself on the back and I'm walking around, you know, just proud and like, yeah, telling everyone I make my own dog food. And then all of a sudden this article comes out about balancing fats. And I'm like, I don't even understand what this means or why I'm doing this. And I freaked the hell out at home in private, but I did. And then someone else, I think it was Renee. I was, we were having a conversation on Facebook and she piped in that, you know, well, if you're feeding a variety of proteins, you're naturally balancing. And I was just like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, because it was just like a voice of reason. <laughs> I can't. And so, but that experience taught me to just wait. I know that it gets frustrating. I know that it's like, gosh, more information. What? Just wait. I mean, because like right now with with Scout, he has cancer. He's going through the CHOP protocol, and after one, after the fourth med, I don't know the names of the medicine, but he has four medicines, and after the fourth medicine, he eats cooked food for a week, and it's just the way it is. And it's a, like a, um, what's it called? A, a compromise that I made with this oncologist that for that week, I would take them off of raw and just feed them cooked food. It's really easy to do. You just cook it and then mix it with Dr. Harvey's paradigm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so leaning too heavily on the research or homework from other people. I made that mistake many times. I would, someone would post something and it would sound very definitive that, oh my God, this is it. Here's the studies that say this. I would never read the studies. I would never even think about the fact that, you know, is this really related to my dog? None of that. I would just automatically adapt and adjust because someone said this. Now I don't even pay attention to half the things that people post. I mean, it's just sort of like, if it's something important and I'm curious about, I will look into it and get some more, you know, do some more research. Um, but I would like to interrupt myself for a second and say, please stop giving me homework. Those of you who send me emails asking me to research things from you, I have a full-time job. I have four dogs. I have five, 
<laughs> I have five acres of lawn to mow that I will be mowing this afternoon. I'm waiting for it to dry off. Um, I mean, it's just like, I do not have time to do research for myself, let alone for other people. So you do the research and then you call me and tell me what you found out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then giving too much weight to a stranger's opinion whether it be about you know, your dog's weight, your dog's coat, or your, the diet that you're feeding to your dog, or whether or not, like I've seen people who mix raw and kibble in a bowl together, and you post something, a picture of that in a raw feeding group and let the pile on begin. I understand that everyone's, in my opinion, I think that a lot of people can add so much value to what we're doing to our dogs by just sharing their thoughts on what you're doing. And if you're gonna share stuff on social media, I don't care if you even put in there don't comment. People are going to comment. If you say, if I say that uh, I have allergies today and they suck, by the way, I don't. So do not leave me a message, but <laughs> I will get 50 messages with essential oil blends that I should be using, the diet changes I needed, the supplements I should be doing. Oh, be sure to get local raw honey. And it's like, y'all, I've, I've had allergies for 50 years. I've got it. It's just that I feel crap today and I posted it on Facebook because I wanted some sympathy. But instead, <laughs> I mean, I got two people who are like, oh, I hear you. But everyone else all of a sudden became, you know, a holistic doctor and started giving me their remedies. And it's just like, that's what it is with social media. It so is. if you're not, if you don't want people to comment on it, just don't put it out there. But if the <laughs> people do comment on it, and if you don't like what people say, the beauty of it is you can ignore it. It took me a long time to figure that one out, but it's a really cool little thing. So because I just talked about the negative, let's get some positive in there. And this is why I love the fresh food community. And I use fresh food here because to me, it covers both raw, home-cooked, hybrid diets, you know, freeze-dried, dehydrated, just everything that we're feeding to our dogs. Um, but you know, there is variety. There's variety of thought. There's variety of how we feed our dogs. Um, there's a variety of dogs. There's a variety of health issues and concerns that people have. And so as people are sharing information, you're going to connect with so many people when going back to Sydney, boy, I'm talking about her a lot. When she was diagnosed with Hermangio, I joined a Hermangio group. So thank you to everyone who sent me a link to that group because that was a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. But being in a group with a lot of other people, there were veterinarians in the group, but it was mostly pet parents talking about how they're dealing with their dog's cancer. And it made the cancer less scary. It gave me things that I could do for my dog to make her comfortable. And it helped me through. I mean, it was still a horrible time, but I don't think I could have made it without that group. And so, you know, that's what's the beauty of this community is like when people are in trouble, people come together and they provide resources and they're there to help. It's astounding. We can be tearing each other apart on Monday, but then someone's dog gets diagnosed with cancer on Thursday and we're like, circle the wagons, let's get this dog <laughs> healthy. Um, many of us are hungry for information and we love learning all of this stuff. And so it's kind of fun. When I met Billy uh, years ago, we sat down to coffee and it was probably one of the first times that I sat down with someone who was just like worse than I am, like 10 million times worse than I am as far as how his brain is and how he is just thirsty for information and learning things and stuff. And I'm just like, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, just there are people out here like this and it's fun. And also, you know, Pet, we come together, we provide resources. We have, I mean, some of these groups and the resources that are in the groups are astounding. It just blows me away. And these are just either just pet parents or veterinarians and pet parents coming together and collaborating to make sure that information is available to all of us. And it, it blows me away. So you're in a good spot. So that's it, yay. And those are all the ways to find you. See, I barely have time to get something on my Facebook page five days a week. <laughs> I challenge you to get on TikTok because that's fun. No, thanks. Um, <laughs> and, and YouTube, uh, we hired someone. He sort of volunteered, so I volunteered to pay him. And so I, I, I guess he's a hire uh, who's taking my Facebook videos and putting them on uh, YouTube for us and actually making them searchable and findable and titled and all that stuff. So uh, I, what I've discovered over the years is I don't, first of all, don't have the technical knowledge for a lot of this stuff. And I also just don't have the 
time. Um, Instagram, I think, is kind of fun. Um, so I do that, but uh, not not as routinely as I should. And, uh, you know, for, for, for me, um, social media is a platform uh, to get information out to people. Yeah. Um, and really what it's about is being passionate about something and being passionate enough to stick with it, even when people are yelling at you and telling you you're wrong. <laughs> Uh, and when you're tired and you really don't feel like doing it and you just say, no, I, I, I saw this horrible thing. I, there's this <laughs> drug out and I have to tell everybody not to use it. <laughs> so it's hard. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's people don't realize it, but it's for my blog. I work on my blog about 25 to 30 hours a week. I mean, it's a full-time job. Yeah. It's like, I, I mean, I walk around with a computer in my pocket, so I'm constantly like, you know, posting things and sharing things because stuff comes through and I'm doing all of that. And it's just, then, you know, on the weekends, I have a newsletter that I need to put out. I have YouTube videos that I need to do. I have blog posts that I need to write. I have old blog posts that I have to rewrite. Plus I have to rewrite this book and I have a full-time job plus four dogs. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> Look, I'm busy. I'm really busy. But you are really busy, but here's the thing. You're very passionate because there's no way somebody who didn't really care about what they were doing would put in 35 hours in addition to going to a job to pay the bills. Um, so, and I wanna ask about that. And uh, do, do you uh, have an income through your blog? It, you know, are things monetized? Because for people who are thinking about um, you know, because blogging can make good money and you can do affiliate programs and there's a lot of things that you can do, uh, mm -hmm. for you personally, I mean, you're putting a lot of time in and I don't think you're doing, again, you're not doing it because you're making a million dollars at it. You're doing it because you're passionate about it, but for somebody who wanted to do it and maybe have a little extra income, is it, is the potential there to yeah. make money if you have it? It really is. And, and the thing about it is that a lot of people will come to me and they're like, oh, but there's so many other people who are already doing it and they're doing it better. That is the wrong mindset to have. And I'm going to say this, mostly this is women coming to me. So ladies, we got to stop, you know, downplaying our skills because, you know, we own this community. We own the pet industry. Whenever we go anywhere out in public, when we're not being inside introverts <laughs> all i see is women women everywhere we dom we're the ones that make the decisions for the pets in the homes and we're the ones that are starting the businesses we're the ones that are running the businesses we're the ones that are at the expos we're the ones that are talking to each other yes there are men but i mean think about it like in these groups these what the, my followers are have always been majority female but what's amazing is that i went from being 10% to I think I'm around 20% male. So the guys are in there, but yep. you know, there's no reason for us to second guess anything. But yes, I do monetize. I mean, like I have two books. I still make money on those books. Um, I do affiliate marketing. I only promote products that I believe in. Yep. And um, and that I use with my dogs. And so I get emails from people inviting me to be there. You. you know, for those of you guys who don't understand what that means, affiliate marketing is that here's some lemon or some um, lemonade that, oh, the best lemonade ever. It actually is. It's really delicious. And if I were to start promoting this to you guys, and if you guys went and bought it through my special link, I would get a commission. So that's what affiliate marketing is. And I don't, I can push it a lot more to make more money. But my goal isn't really, I mean, yes, I do want to make money because my blog supports my dogs and it just gives me a little bit of money in the bank. And it, I, because of my blog, I now have an investment account. And so I'm excited about that. But so I do like to make money. I just, to me, it's more important that people trust what I'm saying. And it, when I found it in the past, cause like years ago, when my blog was still a wee little blog, I used to sell, sell, sell. And people tr looked at my blog as more of an advertorial because I was constantly pimping out products. Now I hardly do that. And I don't often accept free products from brands. If someone wants to introduce me to a product, I'll go and buy it. That way, if I don't feel like writing about it, I don't have to. Um, and I can tell you guys that, no, I bought this with my money 
and this is my thoughts on it. I just, it's just so much easier. But yeah, there was a time when I was making all, about $8,000 a month with my blog. Wow. And um, I think it was 2018 when Google did an update and everything holistic was like, we all got our hands slapped. Like how dare you talk about alternative food and medicine? <laughs> McDonald's, vaccinations, <laughs> you know, we want pills and drugs and all that. You keep that hippie stuff to yourself. And my <laughs> traffic dropped by over 50%. And wow. that was it. I was going to quit my job the following year. And I didn't. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Well, so you're an accountant to support you and you're a blogger to support the dogs. It works yep. out. It works Jobs out. For all. And I work from home. So, um, oh, for awesome. both, so it all works out for me. There you go. Okay. Well, we are about out of time. Kimberly, that was amazing. You're always fun to talk to. <laughs> uh, you're, you're just, you're bubbly. You're full of energy. And you know, when a lot of people are in their after lunch snooze, uh, you, <laughs> you did not fail to deliver. So thank you very, very much for joining well, thank us. Thank you. This is so much fun. And you guys, um, you know, it's been a fun do you have your, your two books there with you? I do. Let's see them. Yep. Just in case anybody's interested. This is my first one. This is a novice's guide to raw feeding for dogs. So if you're brand new to raw feeding, this is really great. I'm going to rewrite it though, but it won't be much changes. And then this one is, this was supposed to be a series, but it didn't quite work out that way. Um, but it's basically a hundred questions that people have asked me over the years about raw feeding. And I just answered them all in one book. Awesome. So those are both available on Amazon. You can just go to Amazon and look up Kimberly Gautier and they'll both come up. There you go. All right, everyone. So those of you who are thinking about you want to be a blogger or do something um, crazy, like have your own social media page about whatever it is that you write about for pets um ask her <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and you guys right now tiktok is wide open when it comes to raw feeding so if there are any of you guys that are tiktok savvy get over there and start sharing stuff about raw feeding because there you know there aren't a whole lot of that's not there's people they're sharing but it's just really not the way it is like on instagram where wow a lot of people are on instagram okay so, there you go thank you guys. and thank you carolyn for sharing I, I think I'm just going to stick in my, my little sandbox that I know how to work. <laughs> I know how to make castles in this sand. <laughs> like my, my poor blog on my website has been totally ignored because I, you know, between moving and building a house and the farm and everything, it's like writing. <laughs> but everyone follows you on Facebook anyway. I mean, I'm I know. Just, I'm, I'm Facebook just is my fascinated thing, so. with the, um, are they donkeys or mules? Well, Gwen rescued a mule. I rescued three donkeys. And then I have two hennies, which is a horse, dun horse donkey cross. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it was crazy. Um, but they are very adorable for anyone is, who is interested in finding out about that whole shenanigans. Uh, that Facebook page is fine. And the ampersand fine and dandy acres. Um, and so it shows how to, how to build a house from the ground up, nice. uh, how to make a garden from seeds, uh, with really bad soil, how nice. to, uh, rescue a bunch of animals. When Gwen sent me a picture of this one little, she's a hinny, um, but she's only about 25 inches tall. She's like, she's smaller than Kimberly's dogs. Um, <laughs> and she's put together by committee like she just the worst confirmation of anything in the world and just in horrible shape they're, they're all infested with lice they came with upper respiratory infections I think it's such a mess so uh and then Gwen has her one-eyed uh draft horse that had cancer in his eye um I mean, we just it's fun it's family fun we don't know what we're doing but we're figuring that's that's all I mean it's like to me I bet you every single person watching would that's like our dream like what my dream is, is I'm waiting for the $300 million in the lottery. I don't know why it has to be so much, but there you go. That was, that's a good number. A hundred acres, either in Montana or, or Tennessee. I haven't decided. And Depends that's how much you I like want. snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have $300 million. So I will, you know. Well, there you go. Well, we. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be fine. Uh, my money will keep me warm. But we only have, have 23 have, acres. <laughs> I have a mule too. Um, isn't he's not technically mine, but a friend of mine let me have one of his mules, Roscoe. Roscoe. Oh, well, Gretchen the mule is very cute. Uh, she um, 
she was an Amish six horse hitch lead mule uh, and um, decided she didn't like people beating her with whips anymore. So she was sent to the auction. Uh, these are all slaughter rescues. And um, just touching her is a major challenge. So, and we still have not been able to touch our mama donkey, Ella. Yeah. Can't That's how the mules were. My friend Johnny got a bunch of them and yeah. And now, but it's crazy because now it's like, it's been a year and not, yeah, it's been a year and they are so like, effect, they're like big gigantic dogs. And it's like so astounding because, you know, I'll go in there and if they, they know who I am and they know I, I'll have treats. And so these big heads are hitting me to find out where are the treats at and nibbling on my arm. And I'm like, I don't have any right now, but I love them. So. Yeah, they do get a little pushy. Yeah. All right, Kimberly, uh, you're in charge because I made you the host. So uh, everyone, we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back at seven my time with Holly Gans from Animal Biome. And we're going to talk about uh, chronic digestive disorders in pets. She's pretty amazing resource. Uh, she's got one of those science brains. So <laughs> hopefully it won't be over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much again. And you guys enjoy your afternoon. Bye, Bye. everyone. <laughs>